paradigm is another concept that allows us to make sense of business research. I titled the talk Paradigms in Social Research because our understanding of paradigms in business research comes from sociology. So I'll begin this talk by discussing a bit about sociological paradigms and then how they might apply to business research. And then I'll present another set of ways of decomposing business research into different sets of assumptions. So what is a paradigm? Paradigm is kind of like a broader level or higher level concept that includes all the beliefs that a set of researchers in the field have. And it is beliefs about epistemology, ontology, what is about the right research questions, what is valid scope of research, what are methods that we should apply and so on. So it's basically a, a template or a set of rules that we apply to, to guide our research efforts. Paradigms are more important in qualitative research than quantitative research because qualitative research allows you more freedom of what can be studied. For example, uh, in quantitative research, we can only study things that we can quantify and it's very hard to quantify how an individual, for example, perceives a situation. So it's a bit harder to get into the heads of people experiencing a situation. Paradigm was introduced by Kuhn in his uh, book The Structure of Scientific Revolutions and he was focusing on explaining these sets of beliefs that are held at a specific point of time and tracing how one paradigm was replaced with another one. And some of the examples that he used in his book are useful for understanding what paradigms are. So for example in early astronomy we thought that the earth is the center of the universe and then all planetary motions were expressed in relation to Earth and we tried to come up with formula that explain where the planets are located at a given point of time. Then there came a new idea, the heliocentric view of the world, which uh, set the Sun to be the center of the universe and then everything revolves around the Sun and not around Earth. And these two sets of beliefs, Sun is the center of the universe and Earth is the center of the universe, are incompatible. So you cannot say that both are true. One is true, another one is not true. And also if you take equations that express the motion of planets with, uh, in re with respect to Earth, or you take the equations expressing the location of planets, uh, in relation to Sun, those are two different sets of equations and they are incompatible. We call this incommensurability, incommensurability in science. And uh, the idea of paradigms is that you, you basically belong into one paradigm and then you apply the rules of that paradigm and then some other person might study the same thing from a different paradigm. Sometimes paradigms are not right or wrong. We know now we know now that the heliocentric model is better than the geocentric. Planets don't rotate or revolve around Earth, but they, they go around the Sun instead. But we could still say that even there are the heliocentric model is incorrect because there are many other suns, many other stars, and we don't really know whether such thing as the center of the universe even exists now. So but there are more paradigms that come after the heliocentric model of the universe. Let's take a look at paradigms in, in social research. And this book by Burrell and Morgan from 1979 was very influential in shaping how we understand what business research is about. And they explain that their starting point is that there are two central things that the social researcher must decide. So all theories of organizations are based upon philosophy of science. That's the first thing. So what do you believe is the nature of the world? And then a theory of society. So what kind of theory are you building to explain, your society, explain the society? And they build this model consisting of two dimensions and four paradigms. The first dimension is na the nature of social science. And this groups epistemology and ontology and some other things. They call the two extreme objective and subjective. Objective basically means realist assumptions and we believe 
uh, we, we believe everything share, everyone shares the same reality and uh, we can observe that reality and the reality is same independent of who is observing and then subjective which takes more like uh, reality is socially constructed, knowledge is, is, is private, knowledge might not be general, it might be specific to an individual and so on. So how much we will look at objectivity and how much we look at subjectivity. The other dimension is um, nature society and they focused on theories of regulation and theories of radical change. So are we trying to explain if, how society, societies maintain order or are we trying to explain why societies change over time, why there are revolutions and that kind of things that break the order. Let's take a look at these dimensions in more detail. So the nature of science starts with ontology. The important question is whether we have the realist assumptions or whether we think that knowledge is more socially or world is more socially constructed. So do we take the realist or social constructivist approach? Is the reality the same for everybody? Or is reality something that is continually constructed by people who live in it and the objective reality might not even exist or might not even be, even if it exists, it would not be worthy of studying. Then we have epistemology, which deals with the nature of knowledge. So what is knowledge? How can we claim that we know something? How can we produce knowledge? And uh, the objective uh, ideal has more of a natural science model where we run experiments, we do large-scale studies, we'll try to build generalizable models. And then the more subjective approach is that we, we think that knowledge is relative and it's, it's particular to a situation and we try to uh, produce knowledge that is more subjective and might not be general in the same way as we have in, this, in the objective ontology. Then the third component is human nature. How much do we uh, emphasize free will? For example, in the objective part, objective side of this uh, dimension, we wouldn't uh, look much at free will. We would uh, try to uh, build general rules that apply to many situations. And if there's a general rule that applies in many situations, then that would mean that people act according to that rule instead of acting on their free will. And then on the way, on the subjective side, far on the subjective side, you uh, deny even the usefulness of general rules because people can act on their own will and we try to understand why a specific person acts in a specific way in a specific situation, for, for example. All these three dimensions, the epistemology, ontology, epistemology, and the nature of human are something that guides the narratives of methods. So the fourth uh, element in this dimension is the methodology. So uh, what kind of studies do we do? Do we rather study large samples, maybe statistical analysis, or do we focus on the individual, which we would do on the subjective side? They summarize this uh, objective versus subjectivity using the following figure. So uh, in the ontological side, we have the realist assumption, reality is the same and it's independent of the observ observer. And then nominalism rejects the objective reality. And for example, uh, it states that the concepts that we have are just useful abstractions of explaining the world. So for example, a nominalist might say that innovation doesn't exist. Innovation is simply a, a, a label that we have invented to make sense of the complex world around us. Then our epistemology refers to our how do we conduct research, what is, the, what is knowledge and how do we generate knowledge. The positivism refers to basically applying the, social, uh, the natural sciences method and then anti-positivism or sometimes in, interpretivism is basically the opposite. So we say that we cannot understand the social world simply by observing. We have to get into the, uh, the heads of the people and study the experience of the people in the situation to gain any knowledge of the situation. Then we have uh, the, the, uh, the role of free will. On the objective side, free will doesn't play a large role. And then on the subjective side, free will is essential. Methodology, there are also two terms, 
nomothetic refers to that there's a set, certain set of methods, like there is a certain recipe book that tells you what is the best method given your situation. And then uh, ideographic methods means that uh, you are tailoring your method to the situation and there is no such thing as the choice of correct method in a setting, but it is highly subjective, specific to the researcher and specific to the subject. So this is the dimension of nature of science in this paradigmatic model. And then the other is nature of society. The first extreme in the nature of society is the sociology of regulation. And it basically focuses on explaining the status quo, why things are like they are, how things are maintained. The other extreme is the sociology of radical change, which focuses on how radical change such as revolutions occur, why do they occur, and this class of sociological perspectives also focuses on what is wrong uh, or in the current society. For example, are women and men equal? Why would women have less rights than men? And some sociologists even try to cause social change. For example, Karl Marx and his writings on communism is a classic example of sociology of radical change. Burrell and Morgan put together the, so the nature of sociology and nature of society dimension into this table here. And uh, regulation is considered by explaining status quo. It's mostly value-free and it focuses on societies uh, and in general. And then sociology of radical change is uh, more focused on conflict, like why are some people dissatisfied? What causes dissatisfaction? Uh, how can we address dissatisfaction? How can we change society for the better? So this is more focused on, on what ought to be, what could be, and what is wrong. And this is more focused on, on what is. And uh, if you uh, are more focused on what is, then you're not focused on what could be. And this is kind of like a bit of a tension on, on what is the objective of research. So this is the, um, the two dimensions and they give us these uh, four perspectives called functionalist, interpretive, radical humanist and radical structuralist. The book explains this in the context of business issues as follows. So they, they say that we have the objective versus subjective. Uh, that is the set of ontological and epistemological assumptions. And then uh, we have the regulatory and radical, whether we focus on explaining the status quo or whether we uh, focus on how organizations should be, how they could be. Uh, are there some things that, that are underrepresented like minorities whose rights are not fully respected and that kind of things. Let's take a look at some examples and, and that maybe clarifies the things. So functionalist um, perspective, you would uh, look at, for example, how does organizational structure impact efficiency? That is very like, what is kind of questions. What are the key factors influencing employment and productivity? That is also a what is. And when you do this kind of functionalist research, you might do first a qualitative study to understand what concepts are needed. And then you would do a quantitative study to do a large scale test. So this is very much of a, a study of reality that exists independently of observations, independently of the observer. And then we can make observations and make studies in a different way to study the same reality. Then we have the interpretive, which is more focused on the subject. This would be more focused on using qualitative research, like how do employees interpret and make sense of organizational change? What are the shared meaning and symbols within organizational culture? We might study documents. We might do ethnography, where in which we just go and we live in an organization to see what's going on and try to understand that organization in a very deep level instead of uh, trying to understand broad patterns like we do in a functionalist view. In the context of business research, the radical structuralist might take a look at questions like how do economic systems shape organizational practices or what role do organizations play in reproducing societal inequalities? We might, for example, ask what was the role of regulation or lack of regulation to enable scandals such as Enron, which is what's a large financial fraud a scandal in the early 2000s and led to the largest bankruptcy in the US history. 
the methods here might be more historical analysis. We might use uh, some, uh, some economics analysis or data and so on. Then in the radical humanist, we might take a look at more, not structures of, of business world, but humans. Like how does, how does language shape the society? How do power structures or organizations contribute to employee alienation? For example, we might study how does the use of the term poor man, which is the, the, uh, the, the older term for supervisor, uh, shape how women are perceived in organizations. So we might do things like, like discourse analysis uh, and, and, and critical analysis. So we're looking at how the current practices in organizations and what people do focus on, on well-being on others, for example. This is not the only way of, of structuring social sciences or business research. So uh, this framework by Burrell and Morgan has been criticized on several grounds and it may be uh, becoming a bit less popular nowadays, but it has been highly influential, influential nevertheless. And some of the criticisms are that it, it groups epistemology and ontology into a kind of like a single category, whereas there is a lot more than just subjective objective difference. So there are different combinations of epistemological and ontological assumptions that one might take that don't fall neatly on the objective subjective continuum. A second criticism is that there are the radical change versus uh, the regulation approach is really focused on a single part of sociological theory and it might not be as useful for business research. And we might have uh, need a different way of, of thinking about what are the current paradigms. But nevertheless, the idea that there are competing ways of, of doing and seeing what is, about, what is valuable business research is very valid. So for example, this article um, talks about four different paradigms that are different from Burrell and, and Morgan. So this is, uh, post-positivism is, is roughly the same as functionalism. That's the natural science model of doing research. Then they talk about interpretation, which is, or social constructivism, which is pretty much similar to interpretivism, but there is no uh, sociological aspect. Then they label uh, these, these two uh, radical things more of critical theory. So critical theory is, is research that focuses on pointing out things that are unjust or incorrect in the business life or in, in world more generally. And then they, uh, they say that, well, one thing that is missing here is pragmatism. So the idea of pragmatism is that you uh, don't necessarily reject the idea of, uh, of knowledge as to justified belief, but you are just saying that the purpose of scientific research is not necessarily to produce true beliefs, but it's to produce useful things. Like if we have a belief that is not true, but it is still useful, that is a valid scientific output. Uh, this is best understood with an example. So for example, if we have a belief that birds that fly low bring rain. So we are thinking that if birds fly low, then that causes rain to come. That is of course not true, but it used to be a useful thing to believe in because it allows you to predict rain. So uh, rain is related to atmospheric pressure and when pressure changes, then birds vary how, fly, how high they fly. And that allowed uh, people hundreds of years ago to predict short-term weather patterns, like when is it going to rain or not, and then you would know to get shelter. So that was clearly useful, even if it was not correct. And uh, pragmatism focuses on that kind of, of useful things instead of trying to discover knowledge like all these others would do.